I realize there's a lot of excitement in this room. I want you to bottle it up because we have a, a very lengthy agenda. Good morning, everyone. I'm Jay Doolin from NJPSA and FEA, and on behalf of all of the summit uh, organizers, Arts Education New Jersey, the New Jersey State Council on the Arts, the Geraldine R. Dodge Foundation, NJPSA at FEA, the New Jersey Department of Education, I'm very pleased to welcome you to Arts Education Summit 2017. I know that this will be a great day. Fall is finally here. We'll be able to uh, relax as we go through this very important agenda. Uh, take a minute and look around the room. These are the key education and arts leaders in New Jersey. So sort of congratulate yourself. I was looking at that list of key milestones. And uh, it's a tremendous uh, list of accomplishments. You have a lot to be uh, proud of. And I know that many of you are responsible for that work. Um, as we say in the theater, this event is sold out. And it is a packed house, standing room only. Mary Reese tells me that I should note that a ticket to this summit was harder to get than a ticket to Bruce Springsteen on Broadway. <laughs> and I'm sure that's the case. Um, I also join with Pat Wright, who's the executive director of New Jersey's uh, principals and supervisors, and really all of New Jersey's principals and supervisors to welcome you to our a conference center for this very important event. Uh, you know, NJPSA and FEA have a very long history of support uh, for the arts. Uh, it's based on our belief of instructional leadership and the fact that all schools must focus on high quality standards, viable assessments, which include the arts. And this is really the only way to ensure that all of our students, every student, have an opportunity to um, have a quality education. And we try to make this happen here every day. I also want to acknowledge our student performers. I think they might have uh, left. I don't hear the sound. Uh, weren't they terrific? <clears throat> they are the jazz duo from Hopewell uh, Valley Central High School. Uh, they include uh, Max Donaldson, who was on the tenor sax, and uh, Koji Sakano, who was on the uh, piano. I also want to thank their uh, teacher, uh, David Schwarzer, and Ron Heller, who is the art supervisor. Are those two gentlemen in the audience? No, they Very good. Please stand up and be acknowledged. We know that behind every great artist is a great teacher, a great educator. We certainly thank you for um, providing a great opening today. Um, I also hope you've noticed the great artwork that is in the NJPSA hallway. Uh, this is the work of students who were invited to participate in the 2017 New Jersey State Teen Arts Festival. Festival. Their work is really incredible, so when you have a chance, take another look. Today's agenda is going to address really two important goals. Uh, we'll explore the status of arts education uh, in all of our schools in New Jersey, and secondly, we'll create uh, together a pathway forward to universal arts education in all of our public schools. These are critical topics, and I know that the agenda will assist you in exploring all of the areas. So let's begin. Uh, please join me in welcoming a strong ally and partner in this work, and one of our hosts for the day. He, of course, is Nick Paleologos, who is the Executive Director of the New Jersey State Council on the Arts. Nick. Thank you very much, Jay. Um, <clears throat> speaking, by the way, only for me, oh, well, maybe for a few people in here, if it's not too late to swap a ticket to this for Springsteen. <laughs> uh, 
Um, <laughs> welcome to uh, Summit 17. This is great. And it's great to see so many committed and dedicated uh, arts advocates and practitioners here today. I'm welcoming you on behalf of our chair, uh, Liz Matson, uh, and uh, our arts education chair, Gary Blackman. Uh, they really are two of a very hardworking uh, group at the state level who spend every waking hour um, advocating for uh, the arts and arts education. Um, I also want to acknowledge a couple of, uh, uh, of our own staff members who are going to be helping and facilitating during the breakout sessions after lunch, uh, our Director of Arts Education, Danielle Bursk, and our Communications Director, Allison Tratner. <laughs> Our partners in this uh, are also so committed uh, and are the reason why arts education in New Jersey is, is uh, a model for the nation. Uh, we're so pleased to be working with uh, the Dodge Foundation. Chris Daggett is here. He's always there, and Wendy and Sharnita. Um, and we look to them as uh, a genuine partner, not just in arts education, but in arts support and advocacy across the state. Uh, of course, the New Jersey principals and supervisors. Uh, I guess we're in Mary Reese's house today, so this is great. Thank you. Um, the National Endowment for the Arts. Let's keep them going. Uh, I want to acknowledge uh, uh, the Grunin Foundation. You know, one of the things that, uh, that we're always trying to do is to, is to cultivate and leverage non-governmental uh, support for the arts. And Jeremy Grunin, who is here today, is probably he probably personifies um, the best in uh, the non-governmental community. He and his foundation have stepped forward. Um, he found us, you know, <laughs> we didn't find him, uh, and uh, have not only breathed life into the teen arts program, brought that back to life, but have put their considerable resources to work on behalf of uh, the arts in Ocean County and greater South Jersey, and I know he's working with Adam Phillipson, I saw Adam here uh, on a terrific, oh, there's Adam, okay, great, on a project over at Count Basie. Um, and they, they uh, uh, are key members of the arts uh, education and arts advocacy uh, community in the state. We couldn't do it without them. We couldn't do it without the arts educators of New Jersey, Art Pride New Jersey, and Maria's here, as always, uh, Dance New Jersey, Dale, I see, is here, the New Jersey Department of Education, the Music Educators, the Speech Theater Association. I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on. When you think of New Jersey's role as a national leader, it's mostly because there's a consistent, persistent, dogged group of people who have pushed this agenda for decades. Many of you are sitting here in this room. Uh, and the results are amazing. This last report of the third in the series of uh, uh, census reports, uh, once again, gives us something to cheer about uh, and also something to aspire to. I mean, we can say, and it's not just uh, idle boasting, that New Jersey has achieved and can document 100% uh, almost, 99 percent access to arts in all of uh, our schools. That our kids have reached almost complete 100% saturation in terms of exposure and access to arts education. And that's fantastic. And that didn't happen by accident. And our challenge going forward is, how do we change that uh, arts access to 100% arts participation. And I know you'll spend a lot of time um, you know, discussing that today. Um, as we look ahead, um, we have a lot of things uh, that we can rely on. Uh, we have this recent uh, survey from Rutgers and Eagleton, uh, which told us what we sort of knew, which is there's a tremendous amount of support in this state for the arts in general and arts education specifically. And pushing that message out there to policymakers across the state is going to be crucial over the next six to 12 months 
as part of this Arts Education Now campaign to let policymakers know that people care and that will, people will vote based on their support of the arts and arts education. So the Rutgers-Eagleton study, fantastic, incredibly important. The census I already mentioned. I also want to say, because uh, I don't want to minimize it, when we talk about our leadership role in education nationally, it's because of the work of the partnership and these partners being able to put laws on the books in New Jersey that gave equal weight to arts uh, uh, education as the, as the uh, state gives to science and math. And that's a big, that was, in terms of participation, a big barrier for students who felt like they weren't going to get the same kind of course credit for taking a music course or a dance course or a theater course as they would for a math course. That's now changed. And again, it didn't happen by accident. It happened because of advocacy, the advocacy of the Arts Education Partnership and all of you here. Um, I was looking at the, uh, at the, at the schedule. You, you guys have a, and, and, and I guess, have a big day ahead of us. Um, fantastically interesting panels and sessions. And uh, I see that uh, Sir Ken Robinson is going to be uh, uh, joining us later. And I'm very excited about that. Um, although uh, it strikes me that, you know, that puts the schedule a little out of balance in my mind to have Sir Ken uh, in the afternoon. So I'm going to correct that right now by introducing you to somebody who, whose work dedicated and distinguished work over the last 20 plus years has made his name synonymous with arts education in New Jersey, Sir Robert of Morrison. <laughs> I knew that was coming. I knew. But I still have the microphone. Good morning, everyone. You know me by now, you have to do much better than that. Good morning, everyone. Good All right, a couple, we're gonna take care of some housekeeping things, provide some context, and then we're gonna get on our way because we do have a busy schedule today. First, I'd like to acknowledge some special guests that have joined us here today. Uh, we have plenty that are on the panel that you'll be introduced to, but I wanna acknowledge a couple people. First, our former president of the State Board of Education, Mark Bedron, our very good friend, is here. Uh, and one of my colleagues from New Jersey School Boards Association, our Vice President of the New Jersey School Boards Association, Christy Tai. And I see that Gary Blackman has walked in. He is the, the Chair of the Arts Education Committee of the New Jersey State Council of the Arts. Gary, thank you. A couple things, so uh, it, bios for all presenters are in your folders. That is so introductions will be shorter and our time in conversation will be longer. Uh, you will see hashtags and Twitter handles and a Twitter feed in the back corner of the room. We encourage you to uh, use your social media to make comments, to take pictures. Uh, actually in your folders there's a little uh, printout for you to actually uh, write a message. It says, uh, uh, because of Art said, blank, and then I am Art said now, so fill in what the blank means to you. Take a picture, post it on social media. If you don't have a camera, our friend David uh, Kelly Crow is here. He can take a picture with you, or someone else will do that as well. Um, so, some context. Uh, for today, you know, our journey today really is about uh, started 30 years ago when Governor Tom Kane signed a bill creating the Literacy in the Arts Task Force with the goal of providing arts education for all children in New Jersey. The original supporters of this included many of the same partners that are here with us today. The headline finding from this report was this, that arts education in New Jersey deserves barely a passing grade. Well, I'm pleased to say that that's no longer the case. We've moved from barely a passing grade to being a national leader in arts education. And we know this because for the past decade, we've actually measured. 
in 2007, 2012, and just recently to last week, the 2017 Arts Education Census reports provided us with the insight into the status and condition of arts education in our state, a process that is now modeled across the country. As a result, we know that 99.4% of our students have access to the arts in their schools. 99.4%, that's up two and a half points in the last two years since last we joined. We know that students without access has declined significantly from 77,000 down to 9,000 students, and those 9,000 students reside in 26 schools. The only thing that stands between us and universal access are those 26 schools, and we will address them this year so that a year from now, we will meet 100% access for all of our students, and we will be the first state in the nation that can make that claim. <laughs> Student participation has increased significantly over the past decade to the point that over the past decade, more than one million additional students actually have been engaged in arts education in our schools. And we've seen per pupil art spending increase in the number of educators increase as well. But in spite of these gains, some new challenges have emerged. We know that some 80,000 students that should be participating in the arts are not. We know that opportunities for our students to engage with our cultural organizations, something that has been a high point in our state, has been in decline. And we know that inequities have emerged. For example, we know that per pupil art spending based on the students that are on free and reduced lunch, the spending declines as free and reduced lunch students increase. And we've seen the same thing as it relates to our student arts teacher ratios that the ratios increase along with our, our free and reduced lunch status. In short, more work needs to be done, but our collective history as a field shows us that we have the confidence and the ability to make something happen. To do this, we must refocus our priorities. We now need to move to active participation in creative learning. Access is no longer enough. Participation is the new measure. And guess what? The public agrees with us. The Eagleton survey that came out showed that 90%, nine out of 10 people, agree that arts education is important for every student. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't know anything that 90% of New Jerseyans agree on, right? <laughs> so, we, they also know that our, our, our schools can do better and that our districts can uh, apply more resources to it. So our challenge for the day comes from our Commissioner of Education, who said last week that by working to engage all students with high quality arts education across the state, we are giving our students more opportunities to use their voice of creativity and providing them with the skills that will help them be successful beyond high school. The key words here are engage all students. And that is the challenge and our work for today. The future of arts education in our state begins here. Active participation in arts education for every student is our goal. The journey begins here, right now, with all of you in our collective efforts to advance this goal for all of our children. This is our time, and it's time for Arts Ed Now for every child in every school. Thank you very much and enjoy your day. And please join me in welcoming our great partner and friend from the New Jersey Department of Education, Dr. Dale Schmid. Wow, what a great room. Uh, Bob said this didn't happen by accident, and, it, and it's very, very true. <clears throat> As we were driving up in the car this morning, I ride, ride share, uh, shared rides with uh, several of my colleagues this morning. We, we were talking about a little bit about this and about uh, how we got to this point was about clear intentionality, which is reflected in the census data that, that Bob just shared with us. So thank you for that, Bob, and, and thank you for your leadership <clears throat> on that. It wouldn't have happened without you. <laughs> so it, and I truly mean this, is indeed my pleasure to be here today. Um, I bring greetings from Commissioner 
uh, Kimberly Harrington, who, as you can see by the quote that Bob just shared with us, is a very strong believer in the arts, uh, has an arts background her herself, and we couldn't ask for a better thought partner at the senior level of management at the Department of Education. Uh, I can say that because I've worked for probably 14 commissioners <laughs> in the 18 years that I've been at the Department of Education. Um, and, and, you know, uh, everybody doesn't share the same, um, uh, same disposition towards arts as, as Kimberly does. So it's fantastic to have an avid supporter of the arts and somebody who recognizes the importance for arts for every child, not just for the few. <clears throat> so the New Jersey Department of Education has been, I'd have to say, very proud to be a partner in these efforts in our state uh, to ensure that our students do have equitable access to quality arts instruction. And as Bob pointed out, that's been going on for 30 years. Um, I've been fortunate enough, uh, due to Jay, who was my first bought, boss, to have been part of that effort for the last 18 years and a part of our advocacy efforts through the education partnership for the last 10. <clears throat> we didn't really know where this was gonna go when we started talking about the need to collect data. Um, because as Bob, you'll, if those of you know that Bob, know Bob will have heard this before, uh, but he always says that um, without data, you're just another person with an opinion. You know, and, and it's quite true, and we have that data. And, and along with that, to my way of thinking, along with knowledge comes responsibility. And so it's now our responsibility to take the next step forward, and that's what really today is about, to help ensure equity access to everybody, to close that gap, and then also uh, to start to address the needs for dance and theater, where we have, uh, a, we're still leaders in the nation in terms of the saturation of um, opportunities for learning in dance and the arts. Nobody exceeds New Jersey. There are more dance and theater programs in this state than anywhere in the country. And if you look at those numbers, as a former professional dancer and actor, they're abysmal. <laughs> yeah. But we're, we're well on our way to being able to solve that and, and really have uh, the opportunity for kids to explore um, in all four arts disciplines and uh, to take a look at what media arts is going to look like in our future. So, as we said, none of this happened by accident. It's because of the collective efforts of the people in this room and, and a number of organizations around the state that have shared a common vision for what's best for our students. And it always has come back to the students, and it needs to. <clears throat> so, our next panel that's about to come up embodies this very idea of collective impact. The moderator for this panel um, is the leader of an organization uh, who has been the bedrock of our success, uh, Bob already mentioned, uh, to take our very first journey today in exploring an arts education. I'd like to welcome the president and CEO of the Geraldine R. Dodge Foundation, Chris Daggett.